Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do a little experiment. This was uh, mentioned in one of the comments uh, by Matt on a Tau Flader Mouse video. And uh, they were testing some slugs and needed to take up some extra space in the case because they were trying to run a reduced load behind the slug. And uh, I said, well, you can, you know, in the comment, you can use powder, uh, flour on top of your powder. Um, just regular old, you know, cooking flour is inert and it, uh, it's fairly dense, so it's a pretty decent buffer. Um, it'll take up the airspace in there so you don't get something dangerous on the cartridge. And uh, Matt says, well, you could probably use coffee creamer, and I think he was probably joking, but um, I said, hey, that's kind of a neat idea. I wonder what had happened. So coffee creamer is slightly flammable, just barely. Um, I'll set some out on the ground out here and demonstrate once we go out to try these out. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to load a reduced uh, 410 shotgun uh, shell. So I'm just going to load these by hand. I'm not going to I'm not going to try and crimp everything and you know make an actual good shotgun shell. These are just just for testing. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put a reduced load of powder and a small amount, probably a uh, quarter of an ounce or so of coffee creamer. And then I'll put a uh, card on top of the creamer and then we'll load a light load of birdshot just to see, you know, can you load a light load of birdshot with uh, coffee creamer as a as a uh, buffer? And if you can, what's it do when it comes out of the end of the barrel? So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do this on camera because I'm holding the camera and I can't reload these with one hand. But I will come back to you shortly with uh, some reloaded light shotgun shells. And then we'll go out to the range. It's just about getting dark, so we'll run out there and see if we can get a uh, idea on what these are going to do coming out of the shotgun. And if if it works 410 um, with the 410 shell, then I may go ahead and try to load some up with 12 gauge and see if uh, you get a, a different result or see how it works there. But I figured, you know, I don't have a whole lot of shot. I haven't reloaded shotgun shells in forever, so I'll start off light with some of these uh, 410s. So here we go. Alright, we're out here at the range with this little Rossi 410. And uh, we've got our Swiss Miss coffee creamer buffered uh, shotgun shells. So I test fired one to make sure that it was going to function correctly, and it does. So now... Uh, wasn't sure we'd have enough back pressure to uh, get the powder to burn, but it functioned. So now we're going to go ahead and try a few of them. I'm going to shoot the first one down there on that uh, pizza box so we can see if the coffee creamer turns into a, a solid projectile under pressure or if it, if it uh, works more like a buffer. And stuff is extremely dirty. That's why the little cleaner rods lay in there. We'll buff, we'll uh, brush the the um, bore out after each shot because well, this is a test. I wouldn't recommend doing this. Um, it doesn't work very good. Uh, inert flour would work a lot better. But here we go. All right, guys. Well, kind of answered our question. You can see some of the BBs. There's only about a eighth of an ounce of shot in these. They're super light. But uh, you can see that there's no big holes. So the Swiss Miss didn't turn into a slug or something like that. Um, it came out as a powder and just kind of separated from the shot, I guess. But uh, the shot did hit the target. We'll shoot a couple more at it and see if... Uh, See if its results consistent. Stop that. 
All right, guys, we're back in here, back from the range. I had uh, two of these that shot. They did what they were supposed to do. Not super impressive. The other two, I didn't realize it, but the way I was reloading these, um, the tool that I used to seat the primer, you can kind of see there, it seated the primer too deep, kind of pushed that uh, primer in. So those didn't fire. So plan B... So I've got some of these Magtech. Let's see if you can see that. Focus, focus. Yeah, probably not. These are Magtech 410s or two and a half inch shells. We're going to do the same thing with these. They use large pistol primers with with a good solid pocket, so I know that they're going to function. And uh, we'll go give these a shot. So I'll load them, and I'll see you back out on the range. All right, we're back. You can see these are the pieces of paper towel that I used to just shove down that bore after each shot. Uh, extremely dirty. That's one shot. And uh, that's not something I would want to be shooting a bunch of. But let's go over here and check out the target. So we had three of those super reduced loads on target here. And we got about one fifth of what you'd have on one normal 410 shotgun shell. So I guess that is a reduced load. And uh, no big holes where the uh, uh, wadding or buffer was hardened and hit it or anything like that. Didn't see any spectacular footage of flash. So we'll see when we get back to uh, the house, what actually happened there. Uh, I'll go through the slow motion and see if uh, we can see any kind of excessive flash or, or funky, funky record or anything weird. So, All right, guys, we're back out here in the garage, um, kind of following up, closing out the video. Uh, I got to shoot two brass shells. These are the Magtex once again and then two uh, just plastic coal regular 410s and nothing spectacular happened. I mean we uh, we got kind of a puff of powder out of the barrel with the, with the shot. Um, it definitely came apart. Uh, it didn't stick together or bind in any way. Um, and you can see in the in a couple of the slow motion shots where you have uh, kind of a puff of powder at the end of the barrel and uh, you know patterned like a super reduced shot shell would um, nothing fancy you can see one of these uh, uh, that little shotgun popped open and ejected the shell out beside my head, kind of caught me off guard, but uh, um, didn't do anything. I think I either didn't have it quite closed all the way or or uh, the rim of that brass shell, brass hole may be a little thicker to where it couldn't quite latch all the way down, but uh, didn't do anything. It just, it just uh, opened the shotgun up. Um, yeah, nothing spectacular. I mean, thanks, Matt, for uh, suggesting the video. I'm always up for trying something like this. But um, in this case, uh, until I can find some coffee creamer that maybe is combustible, this this stuff I, I got I just don't think is very combustible. Um, so you're not going to see much of a difference um, with it as opposed to just flour or any other uh, inert buffer. So uh, anyway, maybe I'll give this one a shot again with 12 gauge if I can find some some of that uh, old school coffee creamer. Probably caused cancer or something, you know. But for whatever reason, it's it doesn't work the same as it used to. 
Uh, but anyway, until next time, thanks for tuning in to Gilly's Guns, and we'll see you around. Okay, so this is our test shot of the Swiss Miss coffee creamer. Just kind of see how it burns. I'm sure there's a million videos that, that show this uh, stuff burning, but if you've never seen it, it is slightly flammable, so we'll go ahead and light some up. There we go. That was very disappointing.